I think Ian had a brief drive-by mention of Ty Seagal on a recent episode, which reminded me of how much I like the guy, but I can't understand why he hasn't been bigger uh, beyond maybe oversaturating the market in his corner of, of indie rock. I feel the same way about bands like Ted Leo and The Pharmacist. They recently enjoyed a small anniversary media cycle for Tyranny of Disness, but it shocks me how many seemingly okay versed music fans never had a Ted Leo phase. Um, I never had a Ted Leo phase. Uh, <laughs> full confession there. All right. Um, so basically, he's wondering basically if Ty Seagal yeah. would have been bigger if he had come out at a different time other than now. Hmm. Um, and yeah. are there any IndieCast core artists that come immediately to mind as candidates for this thought experiment? Uh, that's Nate from Austin. So he's wondering about Ty Seagal specifically. Yeah. And then if there's any other artists that we feel like if they had come out at a different time, they'd be more popular. Um, I have definite feelings about this Ty Seagal <laughs> question. Uh, but I'm curious, like, what you think. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the question in general talks about, like, how with, with some athletes, you could tell, like, oh, this person would have dominated the 70s or this uh, this 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 uh, basketball player in the 80s would be incredible now. He was just ahead of his time or whatever. And, you know, with Ty Seagal, like, what Nate from Austin – and by the way, like, this – asking about like Ty Seagal and Ted Leo like I can already picture Nate in my mind like this guy is like quintessential indie cast listener but with Ty Seagal it's like Nate asked if like he you know this guy should have been in the 70s and like he would have been huge and like the question the, the thing about that is like Ty Seagal as like or an artist that would have taken his place in the 2010s like this guy does not exist without a history of rock music to draw upon and it's like when I think about you know, similar sort of comparisons, like, oh my God, like this person's like, should have, this guy would have killed in the sixties. It's like, I think Ty Seagal probably would have gotten dwarfed by people in the seventies psych rock world. It's like, in nowadays he's competing with more or less like nobody or people who are on the formerly known as Burger Records label, but like, or like the OCs, I think would be yeah, the other big yeah. dog and who I actually think is, are probably bigger than him now. Ooh, I mean, that, that's certain. That's a good question, but I would say like as a live attraction, I think yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, like the OC, like the OCs, I think they played Red Rocks recently, wow. which yeah. uh, you know maybe not the level of King Gizzard, but the so the reason I think like Ty Seagal is like perfectly positioned for now is because there really isn't a lot of competition, and when you look at his prime, like at least as a, a figure of the indie rock discussion between 2010 and 2014, I think that is like the last period of time where uh this guy could be like an indie a-lister because at the beginning you had like shit gays and psych punk like early kurt vile jay retard early waves and like maybe like when he released that album in 2014 i forget what it's called it's red he's on the cover it's like i can't believe i can't remember a ty seagal album title like wow <laughs> um but you know it's like the men were big at that time cloud nothings um like 2010, 2014, like that is just when it was, you know, still kind of all right to be an apolitical, just straight up rock act. And any well, I mean, can I say like I feel like Ty Seagal? I mean, I don't know this. I, I guess I, I I'd like to ask him this, but my feeling about him is that he probably is as popular as he wants to be. Oh yeah, I don't get I don't get the sense from him that he's trying to, you know make a leap to arenas or something like you don't put out like three records a year making the kind of music that he does with that goal in mind. I mean, he's a guy who, again, I'm going to use the music venue uh, standard as a way to measure someone's popularity. But like here in Minneapolis, like he plays first Avenue, which is like about a, I think that's like 15 to 1800 people. Um, so, and I would imagine that he he does that in most markets. In LA, he probably oh, plays LA is market. much 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 like LA, like Southern California is like that is his territory, like but that like, or the Bay. But to play a venue like First Avenue in the middle of the country, I think yeah. speaks to him being more popular than like a majority of indie rock people that yeah. we talk about. A majority of even indie rock people that get a lot of press, you know, like he he so he's. He's doing fine, I think, as he is. I, I guess I don't. I wonder, like, what's the expectation? Yeah. That if you think he should be bigger, I mean, like, wh what would cause you to think that? Like, I, I can't really think of an era. Like, 
that he would be bigger than he is now. Yeah, like, if he, if he existed saying. five years earlier, like maybe like I don't think there would have been a wave of like um, bands that would have carried him over. And if he started right now, it would be much more of a niche thing. 